Welcome back, guys, to the Bear Podcast Show with me, Sean Scullion, aka the Handsome Stranger, Owen Mallon, aka the Bear, Aiden, face for radio behind the scenes. We are joined with Jess. She doesn't talk much, but she's here. <laughs> and today we are joined with John Giardi. Good Thanks. to be here, guys. What's John, happening? John, thanks very much for coming up. Brilliant to be here. Um, I've been obviously a mess. I think I messed you, but was it six weeks ago? Was you were right, on we were. Like, get me on, get me on. And I just, I've been, but I've been following your story for ages as well. So. We've, uh, I, because I had messaged, it was, it was right around at the start, and then I had messaged you, and then we were getting back and forth, and it was just one of those things. It's been that mad recently, but it's good to actually finally get you here. And good to be here. A couple of things happened to you over this last oh, lack of weeks oh, as well, but luck will we'll start way back. Madness. It's been, I, that's, well, hey, look, John, before we get into all that there, what, uh, who is John? Where did he come from? Where did he hail? John was born... 1991 in Trillick, County Tyrone, at the, the station house, and brilliant childhood. We had, we had a great childhood. Uh, our parents was uh, taxi drivers, um, and just listening to a lot of lot of music growing up, stuff like that. Uh, just literally was all we ever had in the house. You know, was music and and was all I ever really wanted to be, you know, but I suppose I lost interest in it for a couple of years, you know, and then got into secondary school and that's whenever whenever I knew it was it was gonna be something that I was gonna pursue and you know. But uh I brilliant. Uh our our grandparents was uh, from Enniskillen, so we spent a lot of time up there. That's why so many people get mixed up, you know, whenever <laughs> whenever they see the the f- people people write in the paper he's from Manaskill and their other crowd will write he's from Trillick, you know, that's that's where that comes from, you know, my mother and my mother's uh, parents was from, from Manaskill. Um but I I don't know why I assumed you're a Belfast man. <laughs> so many people do, I think it's probably because that that's when I've had had the most recognition. Uh, whenever I moved to Belfast, but I there's <laughs> there's been a right few tales in the streets. Belfast claiming you, aye, that's what the, it is. At, they are, yes. they are. In, in fairness, they're if they're not claiming me, they're definitely supporting me. Mm-hmm. You know, it. Uh, you become a, a regular face and so, some of the our voice that people have come to recognise. You're nearly as famous as the wee guy with the. Messed up, absolutely. I think people pay him to go away. <laughs> a guy called Tippy makes these figures in Belfast, and it's like he used to do all the wrestlers, but he's recently done he done Paddy McDonald, uh, you know the the comedian. Oh, Paddy, a legend. Colin Geddes, he done Mickey Bartlett, all the comedians. He'll be doing Sean in no time. Hey? <laughs> <laughs> he done Mister Tato. <laughs> He'll be doing own <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay. He done he done the Vi Olympic guy and then he done me. <laughs> so who, I, who came first? <laughs> I I was I think I've been the last one, but I'll I'll send you down one of them. They're class, like they just they're just sitting at the table. But that um, is actually I need to get in contact with this guy because I am going to get him to do I will I no because that's where I seen it first was was uh, whenever I was in party on his podcast and I was like, Oh they're class. And then Tippy Tippy asked me, he says, I'll make you and he sent me like loads of them. Oh and brilliant. like that's I well, you know, we have the wee wall out there of all the stuff. All the like, stuff, that's what so, I've seen because I arrived in and I don't normally drive the car, so I took the car because it was coming a longer journey. And uh, I was went out of the car and there's no CDs <laughs> and I'm like, I've nothing to give these guys. <laughs> oh, don't don't worry. there's a CD in my woman's Jeep. I jumped under there one day and it was funny, you know, isn't it? Funny you somebody you see somebody's name or you see somebody and then all of a sudden it it, it yeah. comes about the attraction comes about but I jumped in already and and the CD was playing I was like who's that there and she goes I bought this of a guy in in, in Belfast that must have been last year <laughs> or must have been after that and I was like sure he's coming on the show <laughs> so <laughs> I, I must have got a sign <laughs> but you know it is crazy like I always think to myself. I suppose I wouldn't notice it as much. I only notice it whenever I'm really ordering. But CD Steve's always there selling the CDs. I'm singing. 
I might lift a bundle and have them in my arm and be singing and s selling them. But he knows more about the people that are actually buying because I'm just constantly, and it's always Christmas and summertime that this is happening. Whenever you're in that rhythm, you don't even stop and you're just walking from side to side, talking, you know, trying to interact with the crowd without having a conversation with them. And that's part of the show of busking is that you sometimes take the mic off and you walk to one side, you walk to another, you might interact with a child by waving or something. And that's basically all I do. Steve sits there and he's selling the CDs. So it's mad to say that you're like, if, if I have had that what? conversation, there'd have been a chance that I'd have been on the show earlier. Like people, I, people have messaged me that I would, I have been watching for years that have said, oh, we got your CD. You know, like people that would be known. Yeah. And, you know. Does it still be, does it still be hard to get your head around that? Big time. Jim McDonald from Carnation Street. Charlie Lawson. Perfect example. I had a CD and came up, comes up, hugs me. Every time he's in Belfast to this day, will come up and hug me. And, you know, that's mind blowing for me whenever I see him. Like, I'm like. He's a good singer, so he is, so he is. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, that's, you know, Belfast, there's some amazing people, like. You they know, get behind you, but. Big time, people that I grew up watching, like, even boxers, the likes of Paddy Barnes, Car Frampton. Like, I actually know them people now, and I, whenever I was living in Anniskill, and I used to watch them on TV, and it's just incredible now that I'm living in Belfast, and people know me, and sometimes you'll be out in the town, and, it, it comes both ways like not yeah. everybody will love you yeah you know but the majority will show you support and show you respect but you'll always get the odd hard and it'll go mad like but sure you get you get that in every aspect I, you can't yeah. please all the people all the time like yeah. even sean being as handsome and as as nice <laughs> of a guy as he is like you know he may pick up one or two jealousy <laughs> i put it down to that's what it is like. that's what it is ah, i yeah, think yeah. but before we go we're down and think you obviously must have Start at home on your skills and learning music, guitar. No, was that back at home in Trillick? Was that in that secondary wasn't school? Trillick. That would have been a, that would have been probably before secondary school. Um, if we go right, right back to the start. Uh, Daddy owned a owned a taxi company, and he used to have a mechanic. <laughs> a couple of miles down the road, and he used to go down in the evening. Well, he'd he'd called maybe a couple of evenings a week to pay the mechanic to, to fix the cars and. The mechanic's son played the piano and was a singer and was gigging at the time. And it was the, that was the first time I ever sang into the microphone. And it's mad that that memory always lives with you. Um, that that was, you know, there was something nice about the singing into the microphone and the warmth of the ambience of, you know, the probably the bit of a fact in your voice and seeing how good you could sound if you put in a bit of effort. Mm -hmm. And that was, I was definitely in primary school at that age. And if you move on a few years, I was lucky enough whenever I would be in a, in a school, um, I got to know a, a school teacher and um, he taught art. And my mother used to lift them in the taxi and she said, Niall, or John, has got a bit of an interest in music and Niall had just been at uni in Liverpool and Niall goes, just send them over, I'll give them a couple of guitar lessons. And that was really the start of it. Like That man gave me everything that I needed to become, to become successful in music. I needed a mentor like that. So I used to go over to Nile and he used to set up the full PA that done it anything. Um and he used to teach me guitar then and then he'd put on backing tracks or karaoke tracks for me to sing to learn how to sing along with the guitar and that was that was dead out for me. That was the start where I knew I was like, This is unbelievable feeling. This is freedom. This is getting your head away from everything else that's going on in life and you're living in that song, you're living them lyrics by performing them. Nobody knows. Everyone's different. I'm not saying every singer will feel the same, but you know whenever you're in that moment you're singing and, you know, nothing else really matters. Connect with the song and uh, 
Niall just gave me a lot of his time and I was maybe 14 at that time and Niall was like I'm going to start getting you gigs soon and my first gig was in a <laughs> was in a wee Chinese restaurant for their Chinese New Year party <laughs> free prawn crackers but <laughs> <laughs> home with chicken curry <laughs> it still, it's still like it still blows my mind I used to like I used to just want to be in that circle doing anything in music I, I always remember back at the start I was like oh if it, at least if I don't make it in music I'll be a roadie and he used to go out and he used to help him set up his equipment and all. It's the small things that people do for you in life that helps you to get to where you are. And to this day, like, that still is a massive, massive thing. Like, you know, for me, I'd always think, let's try and help someone or let's try and do something. Um, we're actually doing that at the minute with Boost. Boost and I, we're doing a campaign. Boost's in your corner. We're trying to find two people that are going to be the next busker here in Belfast and in, in Derry. <clears throat> and we're giving the two of them the opportunity. We're doing the Empire Music Hall. We're doing a five-year anniversary show on five years busking in Belfast. And we're bringing on two brand new buskers onto the show to open the show before me. And I'm giving them the opportunity, giving them the advice. And I'm going to give them the guidance for that night. And then after that, they'll be able to obviously contact me and I'll know them at that point. But I want new people to take the chance, bite the bullet and get out and perform. If you've got a, got a talent. And like, for me, as a child growing up, if I hadn't got Niall, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. I'd be driving a taxi. It takes that one person to sort of... The one person. And like even we were talking there earlier about lockdown... A lot of bad things happened in lockdown. I was lucky enough before lockdown to have met my partner now. And during lockdown, we had we were sitting in a house in, in County Fermanagh. Like she's from Moira, Alana. And I says to her, <laughs> we'll set up the equipment and we'll sing a lot of tunes. And I never knew she was a singer. Oh, so never knew she was a singer. She won 100% was saving that high. And <laughs> big time. And she started singing into the mic. And I goes, this is metal. And I was like, you need to record a song. And a couple of weeks later, she recorded a song on Spotify. And those people ringing me and they were like, I'm listening to, <laughs> to your woman singing and I'm crying my eyes out. And she is literally unbelievable. Yeah. She supported Lisa McKee and the Empire on her recent tour. Um, she gigs gigs all the time, and I'm like so proud of her. Like she's been out busking. Like she works with another guitar guy all the time. Her thing is totally separate. People are like, "Oh, I'm gonna book you and Alana for." She's I'm hedging like, her bets in case she gets really big. And she has to cut you <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, no, we do we do our own thing, but yeah. that happened during COVID. And that is a prime example of what I like doing. I like giving people an opportunity in music. And she got that. And she is now out on the weekend doing her gigs, performing. And people love her because her style is different, totally different from mine. Her guitar player's got a very funky kind of playing. And it's totally different from what I do, but I love it, you know, and... I was like, oh, why did you not tell me? And she's like, oh, I only ever sang on holidays and done karaoke and blah, blah, blah. She's out there at night is, all the time. Is it different gigging to busking? Is there like a different level totally. of confidence? or totally. What, which is worse or which is... Or no, well, not worse. I mean, which is harder to have the confidence for? Which requires more of a... Or is it just a different style of... It's totally different. Um, because busking... I'd say it's your audience. It's, it, you're, you're trying to catch people's attention if you're busking. Ah, it's harder. But, but whenever, people are the going there to see you. If yeah, they're, if, you whenever know, if they're gigging. coming to the yeah. shows, like yeah, whenever they're coming to the shows, are they there for music. They're there. Like I'm playing Cold Island uh, on Saturday, Saturday night, and everyone that'll be there will be there just to hear me. Mm -hmm. We done it, done it about three weeks ago, and I was nervous because. It's hard, you know, because you worry about going to the new venue and I went and like, it's always hard going to new venues because you're like, it's going to be, is these people going to love me or are they just going to be there till a bit of a shindig? 
Like I went and there was people, and it still blows me mind when people come up to me and get photographs and stuff. And whenever we chill, they come up and they're like singing like songs that I have covered. And the mother and father are like, oh, he's listened to Monsters for so long. And that blows my mind that, you know, young young children look up to what I do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that might sound a little cringy, but, but if whenever we... children come and watch the Buskin, is so important to me. And that's why the past while I have posted a bit more intensely about the antisocial behaviour in Belfast. I don't want to see children watching that in the street. Children don't deserve that. Children deserve to come in and stand outside McDonald's where I perform and know that they're safe, not have two drunk people that need help, that are drunk, high and in trouble. Then people need the help and support that everyone's trying to give them. Mm-hmm. But and they're suffering an addiction that they're just not in control of. I'm lucky I've I've no problems like that, but children do not need to see that. And that is why I love to see children coming and enjoying the music, but just Belfast is tough at the moment. And it's, get, it's getting worse, isn't it? It is. Uh the, even the streets everything, everything. And I suppose it's because the money just isn't there till 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 Support them from the council, like you know us. Well, like we don't even have a certain government, but we had Seamus uh, waits on uh, from the Simon community. Mm-hmm. It's just like putting your finger in the dot. You know, they're, they're trying, and and it's just overwhelming. But what you know, and and we're funny here. No, no, we we like to sweep stuff under the carpet, and it's sort of sight, it's sort of mind. But it's becoming very much more in in the main street. In the you know. In Belfast has become far more prominent, but you were saying there, bus. We we were speaking to Ali that 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 bus in Dublin there, and uh, she was saying about it. They they had a structure of like a licensing mm-hmm. thing. Is that is that similar? Is is that in place in Belfast? No, no. It's not, it's, that's your spot. I, I do like I do bus in I I bus in Dublin. I've met uh, Ali uh, Ali Sherlock a few times. Um, Grafton Street's a different boat. You've you've a a rotational system. You get your half an hour, you get your hour slot. I've done it. It's totally different from Belfast. I've done Liverpool, done Carlisle, uh, Manchester. Um, every city is a different structure. New York's one of the toughest because th- there's a rule book on busking in New York, you know, and if you try busking all, all different places in the world, you'll 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 see that. Dublin has got a great system, but for me, the people in Grafton Street just they're different from from what we have in Belfast. Belfast is Belfast people, yeah, or no, Northern Irish people. Dublin's very international. Grafton Big Street, time. You, you know, Argentinians, Spanish, Italians, French, yeah, all over the world. For me, the connection, the the two best cities for Boston is Liverpool and Belfast. Outside of that, uh, it, it doesn't bother me because uh, it's. I, th- I think it's a lot because of this the style of stuff that I do, you know? Yeah. Um, but, but... But with no regu- not no regulation, but with not the same pattern, does there ever be any... Pattern? No, never. You never have no bar? Never, ever. That's good. You don't like, come down. Hey, but you're in my spot. No. Nah. Sling your hook. Would you but like, I, <laughs> I'd like to introduce you to my baseball bat. <laughs> no, no, that's not so much an issue because there's not a lot. There's not as there's many. There's not as many. Mm-hmm. Dublin, you've because you've, if violin trumpet comes over. Yeah, violin back but, to the castle court. <laughs> <laughs> no, he <laughs> never be out. No, I, come here. There's it, Belfast is just come here. If someone see if someone co- came down to me and was like. I have nothing. I have nothing. Uh, will you give me your pitch? No problem. I'll let, let them have it all they want. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, for me, Boskin, it needs to be but relaxed. People are going there now to that point to see mm-hmm. you and would be like, where's your man? 
and I know you have the last while. There's things happen. We're going to move on to that now, but there's things that happened to you, and it's disheartened you a bit. In the in the, and it's made you question whether you want to continue to keep doing that. But I think that's coming back to the anti-social aspect of it, you know. And um, you've had you've had bother, but you have had bother and, and confrontation. I've seen online and not from other artists, but people might say, "Oh." He's only a bastard for doing that. But I swear to God, now, and this is no joke, anything that I have done has never been like that. Well, just to explain to people that aren't familiar uh, with what we're discussing was you you obviously be live when you're singing, but yeah. you've had some altercations with some homeless yeah. guys that have addictions and you've had, you know... And and you've had they've been quite public and, and it's been well documented in the paper and that I I know what you're saying. People might think, Oh, why are you showing that? No, but if they mm-hmm. if they understand the motive that you have for that, like you only want the best for both. Yeah. Like, and it's a not, thousand percent. And it's not like you're you're turning around saying, oh, Jesus, we need to, to, to kick these No, not at all. I think these people need support. Whenever you see that welcome van coming into the town to help these people and you see the homeless trotting up the street to beg for help, then people need help. You see, you know, I always think this, you know, with all the money in the world, save these people. Not always. It is mad, like. Not always. It is. It's... I, like I, I, some mad stuff runs through my head. Like, would all of Elon Musk's money save the problem that we have? See, but it would save some of them. Mm-hmm. But then they say money isn't answered to everything. But in this situation, it is. Jesus, a warm bed is yeah. something we all take for granted, and something that we, you know, I know what you're saying. The first problem, and this sounds ridiculous to say, the first problem isn't always homelessness. You know, mm-hmm. the first problem is the addiction that the maybe led to it. Yeah. You know, and that, and so many of them are victims of abuse and they've turned to substance abuse to escape escapism. We're all looking, we're all looking escapism from problems. Like, and not, we don't all have intense problems, but we all do past times to get us out. You talked about singing there. It takes you away from anything. Mm-hmm. You know, I love when I go rallying or, or when I was playing rugby because no matter what you're doing, when you're doing them things, you're entirely thinking of the only thing you're doing. You're n- you're completely present in what it is you're doing. If you're playing a match, you're only thinking about, is that boy coming around this side or is he going this side? You know, or in the rallying, you know, you're, you're only thinking about the next corner. That... Everyone requires that level of escapism in their life. Not even if you have a good life, you know, have a great life, you know. But sometimes you don't want to be present in all your thoughts and all your 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 pressures and all your worries. You know, is the, is the kids looked after? Have I got things sorted? Is the time, yeah. you know, it even when you have a good life, but when the, when when they've had such a bad life, they turn to to the drink, the drugs to take them out of that. The same. It's a different level of what we, we discussed, but it's the same escapism that they require. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you come in with money, they'd probably kill them. Probably yeah. take more drink, more drugs. Well, like some of them say that when they, they got the DLA, it was, it was like, I, I know a guy that turned around one time and he says to me, the DLA finished my brother. I said, what do you mean? He says he used to only be fit to afford a few pints and a bottle mm-hmm. of cider. Now he could go and buy a bottle of vodka. Mm-hmm. Like, I know, that sounds mad, but sometimes. And the, he's probably the, got a car to go along with it. But the, the the core the core problems not addressed. That's what I mean about you're saying all the money if we could support the like, mm-hmm. But like what Seamus was saying, a lot of his job was the counselling side of things. They need rehab the, the, to, to 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 help them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So not just oh, and we have. Let's look round. We have an abundance of abandoned buildings. People should not be in the cold and the wet and the rain, and we shouldn't. There's a government here that doesn't. They're just getting paid one hundred fifty thousand to set us home. Like the whole thing's on the wrong end, but I get what you're saying, and I know we've went deep in that. But I don't think money. I think the core problems never addressed. You know, the help, the support, the network. The yeah. you know, some of these people can't get a bank. 
can't you? I can't, yeah. No, yeah. and like, like some of the guys that just genuinely fell in hard luck, not substance abuse, were talking about apply for a job and they're like, yeah, and they're like, uh, we need to pay in the, the, the bank, we can't pay cash, I don't have a bank, couldn't get a bank, couldn't get the job. Like it was a, it was a funny, vicious old cycle, but, you know, where are you with Belfast? Are you, are you, are you, you're, you're in the fence on whether you're going to continue busking? No, well, I think, I think, uh, well, I went yesterday and, um, I made a decision. I, I come here, it's, it's always going to be there for me, like, you know what I mean? And the amount of messages that, are, that come in is mad. It's the support in Belfast for me is, is crazy, like, there's, there's, I have a lot, great support at home, but the support in Belfast is ten times stronger. Like you know what I mean, and um, it's just it's it's great to be to be received like that in a different city. Um, I never ever growing up would have seen myself living in Belfast, and it's just it happened. Like just head down for the odd student night. <laughs> no, I never even, and I used to always think. <sighs> I, I came back from America. I was in America for, for just under three months. I travelled from Los Angeles to New York. A load of, load of musicians. And on the way there, you've seen all different types of things. And Buskin was one of them. Buskin was what I watched in all the cities. And I was like, I'm going to try and do this in, in Belfast. And I got back and I was still driving the taxi at the time and I used to go to Belfast maybe a couple of times a week just to see what it was like and I was up for a night out in Belfast and I went to Matchett's and I went then there was a new product called the Bose S1 the speaker needed no power you charged it and it lasted for 12 hours and I had to spend the whole day in Belfast because I had a gig that evening in Belfast, but the equipment that I had wouldn't have worked. So I went into matches and I bought, bought the speaker and I went out and I killed maybe three or four hours busking. And I went back to the van, <laughs> counted the money and I'd, I'd paid for the speaker, which wasn't cheap like. And I said, Jesus. I've, I've stumbled onto something here. Yeah. But that's what I was going to say to you too. It's a profession. Mm -hmm. Like, and like, I, I always, I even say this thing. I remember the first time I seen Passenger. I've always enjoyed Passenger or something about mm -hmm. his voice. And he was busking. Busking, all right. And I was doing this, I thought it was one big funny. I was like, I want to go to one of his concerts now. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was done in the reverse way. Oh, he busks every night before the show. So every city he goes to, he was in Stockholm or something there. Bus out in the yeah. street, then goes was in London. I was in London, and I knew he was playing the next thing in London. I goes, he'll be somewhere about here, and then he posted up that he was Piccadilly Station or something like that. Went over busking, and I was like, it it was cool because you had actual artists now, not manufactured bands. You had the likes of Ed Sheeran. Yeah, you had the likes of him. I know he's not as big, but you had Dermot Candy, and you have people like this now. And Ali, Codeline, and, and I, But these are all. Home their skills mm -hmm. in a, in in busking and it's become now it's changed what busking is the mm -hmm. level that's required the, le the you know what yeah. people want to hear it used to be somebody standing out and he's like standing with a guitar cord and sing a fucking note like and he'd, mm -hmm. he'd have his hat down there and but it's all it's changed. a show it's a performance yeah so like um, it, it is a profession and obviously then you've you, you, you know you do well out of it I've been lucky um, I think I was maybe two years in Belfast and a guy I, I just remember it was just coming up to Christmas a guy standing with a, with a mobile phone I remember him recording it and I was singing All I Want and a boss came finished my day it, well, the day was done and I went then to my gigs in the evening and I went into the bar and I sat down to do my gig and I looked at the start and uh, you've been tagging a video <laughs> on Facebook. I was like, all right, nice one. Um, someone's uploaded something. Looked halfway through the gig, there was 10,000 views in it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's mad. And by the end of the gig, there was over, there was 
something like 70 or 80,000 views now. The power of social media? The power of social media. And then someone took it off Facebook and tweeted it. And it was on Twitter that it cut the gravel. And that was whenever, whenever, but maybe a couple of months later, it combined, if you'd have combined it, over a million views online. And that's whenever Code Line had seen it. And I was in New York and they tweeted and they were like, oh yeah, we want to make contact with this guy. And the newspaper, I think it was the Daily Mirror, printed Code Line, look for the busker. And we have a cut out of it and the framed in the house. And that's whenever I'd seen that they were looking for me. And I, I tweeted him back and I came back and I've been asking Stephen Nolan for so long. To, it was actually Vinnie Hurl that works with Stephen Nolan. I was like, geez, try and get me a pitch on that show to do a bit of singing, to sing a song. He kept turning me down. <laughs> I was like, I'm busking in the city centre. It'd be dead handy. I could come over and sing a song for you as one of the nights. And Vinny was like, I'll try, I'll try, I'm trying for you. And then the code line thing happened. And it was mad because they had tweeted me and I was in New York and then I was flying home. And uh, I went, was flying home. And whenever I landed in Dublin, John Toll was a presenter on BBC. He asked me and he goes, will you come on my radio show on Saturday morning? But it was a big show on Saturday mornings, like. And I goes, yeah, can Jonathan come and play guitar and we'll sing a song? He goes, yeah, of course, of course. We went on, we done done John Toll's show and then a producer came in after the show and was like, would you like to do the Nolan show on Wednesday night? <laughs> he goes, I have been asking for for, for well, a year to well, do well, this. Yeah, it turns around, doesn't it? And uh, I was just amazing. And I remember I rang my dad and I was like, I'm doing the Nolan show. And I goes, big opportunity. I goes, a lot of people watch the Nolan show on a Wednesday night. And went out. And I always remember before we before we went out, Jonathan would always, you know, say a prayer before we went out. And he was like, this is going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. Jonathan from Argentina, religious guy, great. One of my best friends in the world. And we went out and we were like about to go on stage and Jonathan goes, just be be cool and, and enjoy it. And I was obviously singing the Code Line song and I could see everyone in the audience going like that, as if, you know, what the f <laughs> And then Steve Carrigan from Code Line came up and put his hand on my shoulder and started singing along to the song with me. Oof, I didn't know that. Neither I did didn't I. see that. That's class. And... Um, I remember, I remember going in before the show, my mother would never take a night off work and she came up to see the show and it was so important to me that she was there and my father was there and just, oh, it was, it was weird like for me like, because everything fitted like a glove that night. They thought. And Nolan came over to me after, after the it had happened was like that was a really special moment in our show and so many people give off about Stephen Nolan and all but what he done for me there was was great like I'm not going to say he's per perfect at other things but what he done for me was extremely extremely good and made a special 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 night for me and that was whenever I knew like this is so this has become so big now um, like then we done the Empire Music Hall and while I was on stage we were at the point at, at the start of that we were at the point where we were looking at ticket sales and they were going they were going alright <laughs> I tell we you knew, watched we, them like a hawk too. We you know knew, we, we, at the start like we, we, we released that show maybe a week before any of this had happened and like gradually I was trying I was like it was my first headline show big venue in Belfast. By the time I came off the stage on the Nolan show, the event had sold out. But do you not find in life, it's all about timing? Like you, like I find myself just, yeah. you know, I'm not getting any younger, but there's certain things have happened in my life and there's like, that was the right time. That mm -hmm. was the right time. That was the right time. Like you were looking to get on the Nolan show. Oh yeah. I and it I didn't just, happen. I think it was because so many people had done it. You mm -hmm. know, so many of my friends so many of my friends that it would have been like 
that time, two examples would have been Jordan O'Keefe had done it, Richie Remo had done it, and I was with them on them nights, and it was like, feeling when's like, my turn? when's my turn? And then it happened. It was like, it was f- I just, I just wanted that. I wanted that feeling of doing something in Belfast, the big show, and that was the perfect opportunity. And it, it happened, like you know. But it is timing. It is all about timing, and like that's how you. I probably wouldn't have been busking in Belfast if it wasn't for having that day to kill, mm-hmm. where we went and bought that equipment, you know. Yeah. But so much happens, like so much happens. Of of. Out of that, I've, I've done so many shows. I've done great weddings. I, like, weddings is the main thing now. Um, We've done weddings for class people. Like, I've done John Cavanagh's wedding, Conor McGregor's coach. We've done that in Kildare. And it was just one of them class moments. You know, you have top UFC fighters coming over to you, talking to you and requesting songs. You know, it's mental. Asking for your photo. No, not even that. <laughs> you know the do you know the do you know the nicest thing more than anything is someone to ask to request you to do a song. I remember doing a friend of mine's garden party. And uh, he goes, Oh, he says, Frampton will be here today. And I was asked class, because I was brand new in the city, like, and this was like one of the first people that I was meeting. Um Frampton came over and shook my hand, he goes do me a bit of sweet Caroline. <laughs> and I hate Oh, he loves it. He still holds on to it. <laughs> I just laugh. I reckon when he takes a couple of drinks on Friday night, he puts her back on. <laughs> uh, but I just, then when I, he, like, I'd, I'd love to see you having a ch- proper chat with him on, on your, pop. like, he is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet in your life. I must have seen most of his fights. Oh, and, unreal. And the amount of successful people we've had on here that can pinpoint moments they decided to do things like you're saying i decided the bus decided i always think them situations like people always like the amount of times we've had or yeah. the people that that one person that helped or supported you know that that got them there but people can get to the door sometimes but you got to walk through it like do, does it never phase you then like you've come a long way from trillic when you're talking about garden parties haven't you? <laughs> 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 but you know does it never phase you then if you're like oh somebody you know a well-known pundit or a world champion boxer or someone like that's coming on and you're like shit i better not get a frog on the throat here now like uh, no know, well you, th- you seem pretty it's, chilled it's, like, it's so more so it's that that situation more so happens whenever you meet someone famously like the the david gray thing when I was busking in the town, David Gray walked up to me like... I, got, I seen that. And I got the words wrong. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 he got them wrong or you got them wrong? I got them wrong. <laughs> but, but I... David, see when you're playing tomorrow night, change them about. So. so many people, so many people came up, oh, I've seen your thing with David Gray. And you got the words wrong. And I'm like, yeah, I couldn't give a fuck. Like, right. I still went to show that night and sang my heart out. And but the other thing about that is too, you're... You, your library of songs, like the hundreds of songs that you know, like Jesus Christ. But I actually think that that ha- you know that added the character of that because mm-hmm. I actually said to Sean, I says I follow David Gray. And I love da- something about if I'm in a funny mood, you know. I always remember I used to White Ladder. I remember I got the album. I was working. I was like maybe sixteen, seventeen. I was working no time and used to be cleaning up on a Sunday morning and used to stick it on, you know, and. Uh, I turned around and I said to Sean, I was watching him and he'd come on. But it sort of added. It, yeah. was, it wasn't bad oh, to me. Me, because and, he oh, me and you were at a concert and the actual gay who they, we were there to, to listen to forgot the words of his own yeah. song. And had to stop and had to yeah. ask the, the guitar guy, mm-hmm. hey, what's the words of this here? Do you mean that? Right. That's right. Who was that? Christy. That's right, Christy. <laughs> but I, that's, that's totally, like, I, I do that all the time. If someone begs playing in town, you know the I'll, about I'll, right? ta- I'll take the time to busk their music because their fans are in town. You want to give the fans, oh, there's nothing like going to a concert and someone busking their music outside the venue. Mm-hmm. There's nothing like that. That's a well, so risky to... one, but because if you're shit <laughs> <laughs> and all their diehard fans are there, I went, like... to see, went to see Sam Fender in Newcastle a couple of Fridays ago and I never felt an atmosphere outside of a gig like it in my life. 
St. James's Park, Newcastle. He's one of the biggest things at the moment coming out of Newcastle. He played with Sonic there, no, I what was that? It was that it? It was just mind blowing. He's one of the Do you pe- get to see as many gigs? Like this we we had this conversation. I don't even get to listen to as many podcasts as I used to anymore because we're so we busy. Take, we take we we specifically book to go to gigs to watch, to learn. I uh, you've got to be relevant. Yeah. Because music is an ever evolving It's a performance. You never know one day you could be on that stage. You could need to know exactly what's going on, you know. You gotta you gotta think you're gonna be there, but a you gotta live like here. you're gonna be there. You're not gonna you're not gonna live this life, you know. I've done like I've I've met Simon Cowell twice, done Britain's Got Talent. A lot of that show is is you're put there till till try and create something for television. It's not really about the music. Mm. You have to have talent, yes, of course. But a lot of it is just to to try and to try and make television. You know, they came to me and I done I was lucky, uh, they took me to took me to London and Manchester, never done a proper audition. <laughs> they had seen me in Belfast, Buscan. This was very, very, very start. And then do you be like Fuck, I could end up here. I was no, I was like, "Fuck, I'm going out to sing in front of Simon Cowell." You know, and always I remember, I remember the key of the song that I was singing, and I went out and sang it, and Simon Cowell sent me back out off the stage to come back and sing it in a different key. And the guy that was organising the key for the song, so was all just was piano track so he could transpose it the guy that was transposing it and sorting it was sitting in LA working on James Arthur working with James Arthur in Los Angeles it's fucking mad isn't it and was remotely building this track for me and listening through a set of cans which you're listening to and I'm singing into the microphone till him transposing the track to make sure it's the right key for me that's mental and James Arthur's in the studio with him and I'm like, that's f- that's bullshit. I don't believe that. I went on to Instagram the next day and who was flying out of Los Angeles? <laughs> James Arthur. So it just shows you. But you're putting yourself in the mix there. You're putting yourself in <laughs> around them things. You know, you're on the show, you're standing with Codeline. Like, the, the, this is what I mean. you got to put yourself in the positions of... But it's all about everything lining up. Yeah. If everything doesn't f- fit and work out at that moment, you could spend your whole life could spend your whole life trying to become something that you're probably never going to be. Is it hard to develop when you're a busker your own style? Because you're busking, you're copying, it's go- or doing covers, doing covers. Yeah. When you have a small window of people going by to capture them, mm-hmm. they sort of need to know the song. Like even if it was there, even if it was somebody like I'll t- I'll t- give you an example. Garth Brooks one time I went to his concert over in Florida and he was like, "I know you aren't here to hear any of my new stuff. I'll put some of that in between." But here we go. So like even diehard fans that came knew what they were there to listen to. Yeah. So like when you have a small window of people going by, it's very it'll be very very hard to catch them with a song of your own. Like it would be you know. So in the back of your mind, you're like, "I want to go to. I want to be there. I want to be." Standing, someone's busking my songs on Friday mm-hmm. night. I'm singing them on Saturday. Yeah. Like, is it harder then? Do you have one mind? Do you have one eye on the idea that right? I need to now start get my own stuff, my own style. Is it harder to come out from under the the? Yeah. The, uh, but you need to be smart about that. You know, you need to. You need to have s- certain ideas that's going to connect with the punter. Uh, James Blunt done monsters. I mean. He'd done a class version of it. And I said to Jonathan, geez, we go into the studio. This song was released on the Friday and we had it recorded on the Sunday. And we, I goes, we'll do a different version of it. My version is totally different. James very, very, very slow. Mine's is still slow, but has that connection that I wanted. I'm like, it didn't really do much for a while. And then your guy went and done... Britain's Got Talent and mm. people started looking at my version and it's like getting massive, massive views. And that for me, people write in the comments saying this is such a different version. It's about making it your own, yeah. you know, and not keeping everything same, same, same all the time. And 
it's it's just to- two totally ends, totally end different different things. You know, yeah. um, going out and performing songs that people know, but then doing it a little different is what can bring them in, draw them in to listen. There's a song, the real thing. You to me are everything. I do a really slow version of it at weddings, and people are like that's something for me now that people really love. You know, people are like, oh, will you do the that version that you do? And it's so popular. Elvis is, I can't have fallen in love with you. That's another perfect example. It's just a love song that if you slow it down that wee bit more. And it's all about the emotion on, on how you perform it as well, which nobody can explain, you know? Weddings often be said the the horror of them because you have mm-hmm. the range of the young ones to the old auntie who's a sorry old bat to the <laughs> uh, it's not any of my aunties in particular. Um are they do you you sound like you enjoy the weddings? Why? Uh, I used to worry so much about them. But I think f- from from the way I've started doing it now, you know, giving people the full choice of their own music is what keeps it fresh. I don't do the same stuff all the time. I'm like you go and listen to music, send me a list of what you want on your wedding, and it's down to me then to learn them songs. Sometimes it's a nightmare. Sometimes you get if someone send you a song that's got 200 views on YouTube that some man has written a shade. That is what you're up against, and you have to make your own version of that song for their ceremony. And it's nice. I enjoy it, uh, but... It's it's hard hard work, like you know, but it keeps the fresh for me, like you know. What's the plans then? What is what's in the pipeline now? Actually, before we go anywhere, we have to touch on. I thought you were going to skip by that. No, but that, and, and you know, you Jesus, you've had some bad luck this week. <laughs> Tough week. Um, I went out. Uh, I I'll try and put it to you briefly. I went out on Wednesday and Thursday, Oscan. And Thursday had wrapped up and I left the equipment at the back of the van and whether or not I lifted the equipment into the van, I had to go back into the city centre regardless. But I got into the van to take a call while I was at the van. And I don't know whether I've got out of the van and went into the city centre and forgot about the equipment at the back of the van or else I've set it into the back of the van, not locked the van, it's been taken. It's all up there anyway. But I have no equipment now to busk. A ring on. Everything. Mic stand, original mic, mic phone, the original speaker that I bought matches. Additional speakers that I've bought to improve the sound. Um, converters, power packs, a trolley even to move it. Sign with my name on it. Everything. Gone. What but is- I'm assuming it's not about... The stuff you can replace that. It is about the it's about this the speaker and the mic, the speaker on. and the microphone. That one the uh, one original speaker, the other speakers that improve the sound, I, I'll replace them. But I just want that one original that I had. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's it's all about that one one speaker and the microphone. You know, I don't care about the rest. I'll replace. Everything else has been replaced already, you know, when I've all to improve things. But I've always kept them because they're the two most vital part. And I can still go out with that microphone and that speaker on their own and do what I do. But it has to be sentimental because as Sean says, you could you could buy that same model mm-hmm. of speaker. You can buy you could probably buy if you've had it that long, you probably have there's a newer version or more add ons or upgrades or whatever. But it has to be the sentimental attachment that this is your this was yours day one. I could whether and and come here. There's been backlash in this. People have written to me and said, "Oh, you were clown." You've people have read, "Oh, how foolish! It's his own fault. Fuck him." And I'm like, <laughs> so, "So fucking bad." Yeah. Or <laughs> it shows the it shows the breed of a person that would go on till the likes of Belfast. Belfast Telegraph and, and write that. Like I'm putting out a message to people, if you see my stuff, go and try and get it back for me. Like what kind of a f- f- 
fool would you be to turn around and write up and say, "Oh, it's your own fault." Ha ha ha! Like a crowd, a, there's a there's a Facebook page from Enniskillen. They fucking write up, uh, were laughing faces and they commented, "Where where Belfast Telegraph had read, this may stop John Yardy from busking," and this page from Enniskillen read up. Every cloud is a silver lining. Wankers. <laughs> I ain't going to tell you this to you. But, but no, that's the fucking jealous side. Sorry. So whatever asshole is running that page. And I don't care. I'm a, a come here, I'm not a person for controversy. People can say what they want. I don't care. I just want the equipment back. But this asshole's taking a job. As other people are, you know. Pe- but I would say to you too, John. Obviously, social media has been so good to you, and there is the flip side of what social yeah. media is, and there yeah. is the the troll. And me and Sean have touched this so many times. It's not you, you know. It's nothing about you. That person that wanted to write something about you, mm-hmm. and let's face it, if you've done that, you're like, "Fuck, I'm an idiot. I forgot that there." And all of us do that shit. You just be sick to your stomach when you fucking make a mistake or something like that happen. It's nothing about that. But that person there, there's something wrong for them. Because if you gloat or you have some sort of relish in Mm -hmm. other people's anguish, there's something wrong with you. You are not in a good place. Because I'll tell you this, if it's all bells and whistles and you're flying and you're 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 being your your whatever job it is you're in, you're 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 knocking it out of the park and your 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 family's doing great and you and your partner's happy, you ain't thinking of relishing in someone else's mm-hmm. fucking yeah. attic. You ain't writing that. When you're when you're being successful or going well, you would never yeah. take the time to write something Ever. about and no matter what it is, no matter who it is, whether you whether you don't even like them. Yeah. I generally could see loads of people I don't like. Mm-hmm. I'll never, ever take the time out of my day to fucking write something. A hundred percent, but there's, come here, and not only that, for every bad message that, that was put up, there was a thousand good. But the bad ones ring out. Big time. They sting you. One musician from Belfast who I would consider a very, very, very... Would have considered a very, very, very good friend. Who I have loaned equipment to. Took the time to go against me and send me fucking hateful messages. Jealousy. And I'll say this. He'll need me before I'll need him. And that is fact. Because I don't write shit. I'm not a nasty person. But don't cross that. Fucking hell, that's what that's <laughs> But you're right. And you know, like, it, yeah. was, it was a call them on it. All right. And I, I fucking 100%. Uh, call them on it. I, and you know, that this is the mad thing. The last conversation that we had was about doing a show. In the heart bar. And this is the thing that is going on in Belfast. If you're posting too much or your posts get too much publicity, some people fucking hate it. And even though my post was a bit of shitty fucking time, this person still hated it. Aye, because you got coverage. I couldn't give a fuck anymore. And this is the God's honest truth. I'm, I'm, like, I'm not at one for controversy. But fuck that annoyed me. Like, that fucking annoyed me and hurt me more than the loss of the equipment, that somebody fucking take the time just because one of their friends was one of the people that read a nasty comment. I'll throw a boot in here too. Mm-hmm. But mm. they're not flying, Joe. Uh, they're, they're, they're not doing well. If that, if uh, that, if that is they, their stance. They certainly weren't flying that day in reality and that'll be another point to them. But I'm telling you now, this is a massive, massive wake up call for me in Belfast City Centre. If I could never, I could never find something belonging to someone with their name on it and not return it. 
I have a serious issue with people, and people can say, oh, this stuff wasn't stole, blah, blah, blah. You don't know what I've lost. You don't know what I've been through as a child. My mother and father were robbed at gunpoint when I was a child. The fuck? I'm not going to fucking let anybody steal or take something belonging to me, and I never will. This is me speaking from my fucking heart. We grew up, my mother and father were robbed at gunpoint. And that is a main reason why I do not like getting stuff stolen. Should it be fucking five pence piece? Should it be fucking something belonging to me? When we were children, I was very young. And I never talk about this. Very few people know that this has happened in my life lifetime. My mother and father were robbed when I was in primary school. And that's exactly why I said it was nice to be able to sing growing up because it took me away from this. My mother and father were robbed at, at the station house in Thrillic when we were children and beat for over an hour by four men with guns. They put a gun into, me, into my mother's mouth. And I never talk about this, but it's something that I'll have to the day I die and that they'll have. Just because my father was a pretty successful taxi man, they went in and robbed him at gunpoint, were never caught. And that's something that I have to live with till the day that I die. And people think, fuck, I'll write this online, give him a fucking job. You don't know nothing about me. Don't fucking come tell me whenever you see me in town and say it to me fucking to my head, say it straight to me. But this is my my point, and I say this wholeheartedly, if someone has my equipment and wants to do, do the right thing, leave it somewhere, because I know it'll come back to me. But don't anybody else fucking pass comment if you've nothing nice to say. That's exactly why I took that call earlier. To ring my father, because I never talk about this, and it's not something that we really talk about. But it f ruined my childhood, living where I was living. I remember looking out the back window of our house, worrying as, as children, is there someone going to come into this house? Trauma's a wild thing in that aspect. But it, I believe it has made me a stronger person. I'd, I'd, like I'd, I'd face the devil now, and it wouldn't cost me a thought. That's probably why I had the strength to move to the city centre and not be walked over, be a pushover. For me, growing up was was it was good. We had we we had we had good people around us, but that is something, and that's strong for me. I never I never ever talk about that part of my life. But this week, it's at the top of my mind after this happening. Trauma raises the head at the weirdest times because things relate transcend you back to the initial feeling of trauma you know and it, they, this is they always talk about trauma and, and triggers and it takes you literally instantly and you can see it you can see it in you you can see the the the, the emotion the charge and i would say to you that it's not nothing to do with any of the equipment it's to do with that feeling and trauma. Somebody's invoked that in you again, mm -hmm. and and you want to, this time to put it right. You need that back, and it's it's it's, it, and I don't mean this, and it's it's fuck all to do with the actual physical stuff. Everything can be replaced in life, but it's it's that feeling that that's brought you back. That somebody took something, and it's a trauma that you've had from a childhood that's obviously now very clear to us. The motivation, it won't have been clear to them, but this is. You made a good point. People don't know, genuinely don't know anything about people, and they're commenting and they're doing things. But I, I'll, I'll always go back to you and I'll say this to you: they're not, they're not in good places. The people that that do these things, they're not in great places, and that they're saying that, and they, and even now they know that people are still like that. They're not in a good place because yeah. if 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 you if you have, if, <laughs> let's face it, somebody takes anything and anybody. You fucking, you want your stuff yeah. by. Guys, anonymously leave it there 
put a sign on it, put it back where it was, put it in the McDonald's. There's loads of places and loads of things you can do and nobody's ever coming after you, nobody's ever looking about it. But I think it's now clear to me, John, that it's not the it's not the items at all. It's the trauma that, that mm-hmm. that's that's re reignited. And and trauma sometimes is a funny thing. You may think you've dealt with it, but then when it's reared again, you question yourself, have I have I fully dealt with this? Is this something that I've that I've trauma you live with all your life? Transgender trauma trauma your parents have this past to you. That's the, we all know that's a thing and it's massive here in Northern Ireland from the troubles, the, the trauma that that parents have experienced been past tra- is transgenerational transgen- trauma. It's a thing. But that's that's fucking shocking and, and I don't know how any child like obviously you've had that, but I hope I pray you get it by. But Well, it's it's one of them things, you know. It's uh, I don't know what to say now. Fucking mad. That is a mad one there. Well then, John, we'll we'll not we'll not pull you over that. It it's it's obviously a very uh emotional thing for you, but what what what's your thoughts now going forward? You've you've got some of your stuff, you've replaced some of your stuff. We done a bit yesterday, um just trying to get stuff gathered up. I think the best thing now to do is to to get stuff gathered up and get get uh, replace replace the, the stuff with with the new the new model, as you say. Um, went in the march of yesterday, and I'll, I'll be come here. I'll be back out. It's uh, I think that was probably anger and hurt that was making me get on like that. You know, whenever I was saying that, but. We 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 see how we go, you know. Um, I think it'll be a loss to the city. It will be. They don't yeah. care that atmosphere. Uh, a loss to the shops. Yeah. Let's face it, Belfast with pre mark that happened in the pre mark now. I know it's back yeah. open. With COVID happening, living crisis. There's more and more stuff being pulled out of the city and put online. Mm-hmm. There's more and more small shops that people used to go to yeah. that are now not there. The city needs more. People like you on it, entertaining, creating an atmosphere. Yeah. There's a buzz. And look, listen, I know graphing is a different thing, but it's great going up streets that have, there's a, there's an atmosphere. And it, it leads to a shopping experience. And the city and the, con- the economy for things like, like you've seen what happened. Primar pulls out of the city. Mm-hmm. The city dies, like. Yeah. And you don't understand that till you see it. The, co- the economics of it is some of these places are supporting people come in, you know, the fast food and Primarchs are the ones keeping them in. The Big small, time. the small man's getting screwed now. There's no yeah. nobody can afford the rates. That that's, that's uh, another point. Going back, keep about keeping it local, uh, and I have to give them a mansion. Matches looked after me yesterday, like, and I, I just, they, like they, they knocked they knocked a, a percentage off. You know, to try and make it easier on me. I'm still out. A, a lot of money, like, but I have to give them a mention, like, and I, I'm not giving them like a, a shout out. I'm giving them a, a massive thank you more than anything. You know, they they looked after me and done anything that they could, and it's small local businesses like that. You know what I mean? Matchets has been around for years. Yeah. We when I moved to Belfast, we had four or five different music shops in the city centre. There's one left, mm-hmm. and an art thing that I would say too, you know, it's it's good that they're helping because I'm sure you're helping them in a way that if a young one's starting out yeah. and they want to do what you've done. And they see they see the crowd around. They don't see the work that's went before. They'll see the crowd that's around you now. They see you on the known show. They won't have seen the hard yards, but they'll see the, everyone always sees the fruit in the tree, not the tree. But they'll the young ones might be like, you know what? I'll go and get a speaker and say, mm-hmm. I think I can do this. And I'm going to give Cookstown a rip today or, you know, and things like that. And I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I was like, I wouldn't be one for stopping or thing, but my woman would 100% stop. You're playing, bang, a few pound in, someone's playing. Even if they're dirt, if they're dirt, she will do it. And I go to her one day away and she goes, it takes some courage to do that, you know. And I was like, she's right, you know. Yeah, to, to it, get out there. It takes some balls to stand there and put yourself because you're very exposed. Because mm-hmm. you you haven't got any. If you're not good, like you, yeah. you, you you you're not. But I actually even at the rally the other day, 
has up at Donegal Rally and, I, and this week Cobb had a wee sign. Coke, Fanta. <laughs> Brilliant. And I stopped. We were going to stop at the shop. Brilliant. And I stopped and I goes, can I get a bottle of Coke and a bottle of water? And Patrick was with me and he turned around and the wee boy goes, we give him 20 euro, right? And he goes, do you want me to keep the change? I goes, hey, you wee fucker. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Fair play to you for having the balls to give it a rattle, but I'll take my change back. But I just think, you know, it's great. And I do think that people get behind. And I did, uh, look, John, we, we, we touched on these people have obviously triggered you, but there was a massive overwhelming oh, support. Oh, unbelievable. And then, no, you're, you're back on No Show. No one talk, talk to me and, well, he texted me on Sunday night and was like, we'll do something in the morning. I only shared it on Sunday morning and uh, shared it on Sunday morning with something like 7,000 shares. Mm. <laughs> so for, for every share, you're, you're getting a massive amount of views from other people. I don't know what the algorithm is, but he rang me and he says, we'll do a chat about it. No, we never heard nothing, like, you know. So, come here, maybe maybe it's, it's time to let the bad luck go with that. I don't know. Maybe I just need... And, Nick, it wasn't until yesterday till I went and looked about new equipment that my head actually started to live a bit of peace, you know? It, for me, John, I would say to you, and I just mean this from just what I heard and just the, the, the emotion evoked, I don't think it's... The, this incident I think it's what this has made you remember and mm-hmm. thing and I think you know not to sound like these fucking soft but maybe sometimes talk to someone about that you know oh, 100% it's, it's, my, it's trauma my, that's, that's reared his head my and, sister Alice would always say that to me and she is number one for saying that oh you need to talk to people and have a bit of therapy and try and get out of that chain of thought and Alana would always say that too you know but I'm a man. I'm a bit, probably a bit more stubborn. And then whenever it happens, we don't know what to yeah, do. Yeah. And it, it 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 makes you angry. You think, but that's the only reason I would say that to you is for going forward. Uh, I would turn around and say to you, look, listen, tra- trauma. You you can let that go now. This time and move on again and put it bury it away. And that's what men do. We bury it away. We will move on. And then some other trigger that you won't be aware of will trigger that the exact same. It's it's you you'll remember that emotion in, in a mm-hmm. something will be said or done, and it's that entire emotion will be back with fans. It's there. Uh, it doesn't go away. It doesn't matter over time. It just you bury it away. It'll come back. But I would say to you, I hope, and I would say to you is, and I would say to our people at the, the thing, and I would say to you that it would be good to just talk that out because I don't think it's that. I think that situation yeah. has triggered that, and not to get too psyche or fucking thing. What I know, like, but. It, uh, I think it'll be a loss to Belfast, and I think uh, genuinely, I think look, you will get it back out there. We, 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 you know, you need to get back 100%. out there. I'll come here. It's, it's given me some some good opportunities. Uh, you know what I mean? It was, like, I think when it when I came back from Dubai, I thought I'll, I'll not bother busking no more. I'll just kind of do the weddings and stuff. And I just sat in the house and was thinking, I need need to be back out there. Now. You know what I mean? It's great traveling and playing music. You know, but that's all from Buscan. Yeah, them opportunities, the likes of the likes of McCaffrey's in Dubai wouldn't have me over there if if it wasn't for it. You know, been down to Nashville last year. You know, I've been. Uh, Let's all, give you some life. Yeah, has given me a, a unbelievable life. Like you know, and I've done weddings in Tuscany and Italy, and I'm playing Kelly's Bar in Magaluf now for ten days in in July and. I'm Michael Luff, boys. Mm-hmm. Hi. Uh-huh. Hey. And well, where else? Complete like, debauchery out there. Like. Uh-huh. <laughs> and madness. And you then, always called it something else, wasn't it? Uh, something. Uh, 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 I can't remember. Sh- Shagaluff. <laughs> 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 but, it, it, but it has. It's opened some doors. And like the pinnacle is probably meeting Sean there. You know, uh-huh. like, you know, <laughs> you know like, if you weren't out busking and all this happened, like, how would you meet the handsome stranger? Like? But it, it, I think it would be a loss. And I think it, 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 it's been good crack and I know for a fact we could probably push you and get more stories and deeper stories. And as any old wild old, 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 old things that in Belfast, old things that you'd just be like, this is fucking bananas we you hear this happen because we, you know. <laughs> or is there a queue of them? W- oh, there's a queue of them. I'll tell you them <laughs> when we get wrapped up. <laughs> 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 well, look, hey, John, uh, I've enjoyed having you up. I, uh, I've enjoyed it so much. Uh, guys, any is that actually haven't 
here John jump on we'll put your links in John but a fantastic sure. singer and a fantastic voice and I'm, I'm not just I'm literally not just saying that because he's here because when I go I go I shout because if, if he was that bad he wouldn't be sitting my way <laughs> here. because you did mention another singer that must have been your friend of yours one day and I, I'm, I'm sorry I just couldn't gel with and the CD went out the window of my mom's <laughs> car <laughs> Richie who? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I has it's been class and the only real like we've uh, we've so much happening like it's mad. The big the big one's gonna be the, the anniversary show in the, in the Empire. Um, When's that? The twenty seventh of August. It's a bank holiday Sunday, so we're, the tickets we're, are flying out. So you'll you come up. Got a room down. I'm gonna come down. hundred yeah, percent. We'll, we'll definitely have you down. And um, I. I have so many questions for you too. Like, hit us, hit us. We're like, how do, you, how do, like, even during lockdown, I used to think, how does this man ever, <laughs> like, how did you, how, when competitions? So, the competition side of it, uh, how did that come about? So, I had this idea, and I've never made a secret of it. I remember seeing our kings was on the scene and they were big, and I remember looking one time and I was like, "That's good." I don't really like what the 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 style of cars they're doing. I didn't share the same. Mm-hmm. I wasn't really Japanese like JDM cars, but and I always was my degree is an engineer, and I always says, "Jesus, I can do a better website than that. I can put a, a face to that on my mouth. Like I, I think I could have better crack. I think we could have interaction." And I had these ideas. But I'm gamey, so I wanted to mm-hmm. do when I when I first came in with competition scene, nobody guaranteed the draw. So if a car didn't sell out, they would just push it back the next, next yeah. Friday. And I was like, "Fuck that! You're asking people to take a pump, but you're not ready to." So I rocked up. Do you remember the, the start? And the only ever used to do one time. I put three cars up and says they all go this Friday. Good luck. And they're like, "No way are they going this Friday?" And he he phoned me up and he goes, "Are you in the fucking head?" You gonna let these things? and I says I know I says we're gonna we're gonna rock her on I says I'm gonna leave this as a loss as my advertising you know I'm gonna take a hit in these cars it was a BMW M3 a new Amarac and a twin cam I said we'll take a hit in these but then people were like this bollocks is actually gonna give us a rattle and it just ballooned I think we went to forty thousand followers over the weekend and and it, it blew up and we then I just was having the crack we had a launch party remember we had the mm-hmm, party up mm-hmm. in the, the shade and all and then. We got a, we got a load of people up and and we had a bit of crack. But I was the, when we were doing that, and I don't like to, it sounds like the first, but we were the first to actually be on on camera. And yeah. I was like, this needs a level of you're taking people's money here, and it's big amounts of money. Yeah. This needs a level of of clarity. You need to be seen. Um, we posted entry lists. We yeah. guaranteed draws. We we interviewed winners we phoned them live like still think we're the only ones that on any big draws we phone the people straight away and would you find that you still have certain people that'll query or do you find oh hundred percent hundred percent ah it's just a scam about it. <laughs> but sure hey <laughs> I, I, I it actually matter because it was, I, it was whenever whenever when it first started i think there was a, a, a evil or whatever he had up one one time tommy mackerman and, and, and he was like ah, i have that draw of the night and i was like fuck i hope i win it and he's like, you have not bought a ticket to this. And I was oh, like, hi, why not? He goes and he's to like, me. Sean, if you win this yeah, car, it's game over. how does 100%. this look? And I was like, but I've bought my ticket. Why should I not be allowed to win? And then I was like, right, so maybe it wasn't the wisest thing I've done. <laughs> but there, there was lots Did you of refund pe- them? Uh, no, but I, I actually... <laughs> I was just thinking that was it done. But there was lots of people locally that wanted to support you at the start. Yeah. So your friends were the first people to buy Yeah, them. 100%. And, and I never, ever give this much thought in the mm-hmm. process as in, you know, so what's the chance of this? But things are that random. Sometimes the randomest shit happens. Yeah, Somebody 100%. wins something twice or whatever. And then you be through it and all, and you're super sensitive to it. So I'd be like, oh, fuck, if, you know, oh, your man's won twice, but he's won an iPhone a lot more. Like, it's not, not like, yeah. he's won twice, somebody's going to think something. And then you think after a while, you're like, look, I'm doing the thing right. I'm the only one recording the screen. I'm the only one yeah. putting it up. Like, what the fuck more can I do? And, if and would wanna, you tell your friends, thinking, would you say to your, your own friends now, close family and stuff, just maybe don't bother that. Oh, 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 straight away then, mm-hmm. after that, I said to him, and he was like, well, then. You know, a lot of, a lot of them big companies that, does like radio shows now 
So say It's someone, actually now in our terms Oh you can't enter So you know, it's like, now yeah. in our terms and conditions We actually upgraded that And put that yeah. in That if you're an employee A, a member or family of an employee yeah. Because I laughed And said this to Aidan one day I was like None of your immediate family can enter and, and uh, So I shouldn't enter either <laughs> <laughs> Keep buying tickets Fuck me I need something to <laughs> But uh, it, uh, Look how This is the nature of our brain 99.9% of people Great Positive but the ones that make the noise is always the point one percent. Would you not do uh, one for a musician, or would that be too small? Now if you, will <laughs> you, you do like, will you do like? My ideal one would be like some where where you have a raffle for like a loud guitar, which is the bespoke and the the best see, ever. See, so this is why I'm going to tell you this: when you do an item. Everybody needs to want it, yeah. Because and then only fuck, only three or four percent buy. Yeah. So what you need twenty five thousand people to want it, and two thousand them to buy tickets. Mm-hmm. So like that guitar, I have no idea. So holidays is the good one. Oh, everyone wants oh, a, yeah. everyone wants yeah. the coin. And yeah. the and the beauty of it is now uh, we we are, we haven't done cars in a while. I have a couple of wee retro stuff they're going to put up, but. The beauty of it is, or the beauty of it is, the sad thing of it is, people, and I say beauty because it actually works better for me, and there's no point lying or telling mm-hmm. differentness. Like, people often go for the cash alternative now. Mm-hmm. So nine out of the last 11 cars was cash alternatives, right? And therein lies a the problem. Then I end up having to get rid of all these cars again. Right. And, and you know, then the person turns around that you, you bought the car off, say, for toxic at £60,000. They know you've offered a £45,000 alternative. You come back and saying, look, listen, hey, I've had that a week thing. And they're like, well, I'll give you 50 As in, like, you know, and you're like, fuck me, come on. Like, this is not a part of the business. This not. is, you know, but that's the issue. But it is mad, you know, the way some people will always speculate that something's fishy but or something. No matter... I remember whenever I first came across you, someone had said something about a, a, something online or blah, blah, blah. And I remember looking and I thought, this man is the straightest man that I have ever well, heard speaking. Well, I wouldn't say that. No, but, <laughs> but I remember, and I thought, fuck. Well, a- there was a thing went round one time. There was, uh, sorry, everyone knew about it. There was a house and it was somebody from the town, a well-known family from the town, and the guy had won it. But he, he also knew uh, uh, a business partner of mine. But the the turn around and everyone was like, oh, and run for the hills. But I laughed at this because I turned around and I said, so I done a live video the following day. Uh, that's and, the one. And, and that's the one I'm talking like about. Fucking four or five hundred thousand views because I just turned around and said, look, guys, I'm going to just say it to you. The, the advertising agency was like, do not talk about this. Do not address it. It's not. It's not. I said, "Fuck you." This is about credibility. I I'll walk around this town with my head held yeah. high. I know me, and the th- the thing about that, and we'll be very clear about this, and, and I'll just touch on this is the thing about what I says to people was to make that a scam or whatever it was to be that clever. You, there's a lot of clever things needed to be done, right? To be that fucking stupid, mm-hmm. you know. But no harm to you. If you were fit to rig Sean that, said this. I would have been getting Sean house. phoned up and he goes, it's all right, lad. I trust you. And I goes, well, thanks very much. <laughs> and I found friend. he goes, because it would have been me. And, and I was like, so no other reason. But the point I was saying to somebody nah. was, the, the guy that won, and he, he's, he's well, no, a very large family and a good guy. And he, it, it won. And you know what annoyed me most of the time? I couldn't be happy for him. Yeah, I genuinely and now this is a hard work man that, that bought a hundred pound ticket. Like that's an expensive ticket because the hardships so, on you now. So like that that man trusted me mm-hmm. to part with his hundred pound, you know, and I'm like, when it happened, I was like, fuck. In the back of my mind, I genuinely went straight there. I was like, fuck, this is going to cause a shitstorm. And then everyone was like, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. But then on the flip side, that was so everyone's giving off. Oh, I should have lived in the same mm-hmm. town. Blah blah blah. The whole crap around that anyway. So then on done Spain, somewhere out in Spain. Somebody won from Liverpool or somewhere. I, th- I think it was or like Manchester, that there. Or yeah. Manchester. Oh, I couldn't mean somebody local that ha- won it. Oh, you, Do you know you what I mean? Aye, aye. You can't win. Aye. You honestly can't. I, but you know, Sean, when we done the house and the first one, the first house, the guy was actually 
English, but he lived in Fermanagh. He was from Irvingstown. He'd been in Fermanagh 20 odd years. And because he had answered, and everyone was like, oh, I, and he was like, oh, I'm up from Irvingstown. And they were like, couldn't have been local. Mm-hmm. And I was like, how the fuck? How do I you got, keep a cap on this to keep it local? I and and if you did, then you would never get enough tickets. Yeah. But the, well, I'm going to say this simply. Sean was saying this here. See, when we started doing the bigger things, we targeted England for the simple reason is if you say you're going to spend a hundred thousand pound an advertising campaign, if you put on on Facebook the 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 age range you needed eighteen to sixty five mm-hmm. plus male to gender, and you'd be more specific, but it would bring up four hundred and twenty thousand or something is in that range. It's on Facebook, right? If you put that in. For the UK, it'll bring up 36 million. Mad. So your pound is going to be so much better spent. Now, you'll mm-hmm. have less people in England that'll buy an expensive ticket compared to the people here. The trends are like that. But you'll get a better return. So then all of a sudden, we started campaigning hard. And I was going to the guys in the advertising agency. Okay, can we not, like, target around here? If the house is in Cookstown, like, just target. They're like, it's not working. We're wasting money. Yeah. And I was like, aye, but... You can't. And he says... <laughs> He actually turned around and goes to me, do you want to sell tickets or do you want to just have a few people from Kirkstown buy? And I was like, well, you fucking right. what do you want? Yeah. But that happened. And you know what? I will tell you, our sales went up. We put up a couple of competitions. Remember the sold house straight away? Our sales went up because you know what that told me straight away then? There was no bad advertising in that. Our, see our sales after that happened? They went through the fucking roof. And we were like doing 10 grand nearly every day. They were selling out. Bang, 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 bang. And I was like, I was really down like he'll tell you I was in a bad way that fucking people were thinking this and that was fucking really annoying me and then we done that and then you think we there was like nearly a thousand comments on the video I done the live there's nearly a thousand there wasn't a single single bad comment Mm -hmm. and we know what social media is like yeah so I was like surely there has to be somebody like there are, there's people out there sniding or taking but but nobody addressed it because you know what happens see when you shine light and drove they go Big away. Mm-hmm. They disappear. They're but gone. It's like it's like anything. Even the time, the whole Greece scenario, me saying Greece in Belfast, that happened, and there was thousands and thousands and thousands of comments came into the page, and there was support from every corner and every religion, because I was sincere in what I was saying, that I wasn't being bitter. And it wasn't meant I sing it as a love song. The comments came in and people were like, people were like, I'm from the Shankill, I'm from Sandy Row, and I love that song every bit as much. And I'm going, this is my point. I'm singing this for everyone. It's a love song. Yes, there's parts of it that, you know, everyone won't agree with, but that's not my, you know, that's not my reason for singing it. And like even to this day, I go into areas and there could be Union Jacks or whatever on the poles. And then people are like, will you sing Grace for us and our family? And I'm sitting there nervous and I'm like, yes, if 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 you are happy enough. And like it's there's no bitterness in me. I'm not that that person, you know. And people will still there's still a percentage that'll be like, oh, this boy's a fucking... But you'll get that. And then, it'll, look, listen, Northern Ireland is such a divided, but music transcends, sport transcends. This is one thing I did say. You know, words said, but intentions meant. So, like, if you're singing that with political intention... People you know. would you you would and you want to start you, you will know that mm-hmm. it'll come across and you'll get what you're going to get from that, yeah. but I don't think that and like uh, this is this is the thing about music and and art and everything it's 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 all perception, you know, yeah. and and that's what it is at the end of the day it's it's, it's perception but I uh, I I hey look and I'd say this to you you'll not please all the people all the time, and once you get away from that. It's very freeing, you know. Mm-hmm. See, see when that was annoying me and that was bugging Big me, and, and we done that. But I think it wasn't the words I said. The video the following day, I think it was the motion that I had. Mm-hmm. People were like, "He's telling the truth," or maybe they said he's full of shit. But overwhelmingly, I got. I'll tell yeah. you what happened to me, and I was that fucking thick. I done that video, and 
and I put the child in the pram, coat on. She goes, where are you going? And she knew I was in the bottom of the I'm heading for a walk around the town. She goes, what? She says, I'm heading for a walk around the town. You sure? She goes, I am walking around this town with my head up. <laughs> and I walked right down. My, I got down to the bottom of my avenue to turn right to head up the hill. And there was a guy working on the water. And he goes, hey, I want to stop you. I said, and he goes, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> and I goes, cheers. I think <laughs> And he goes No Fuck 100% I'll tell you better not I bought a ticket for that 10 grand And I was like laughing And I By the time I come back And I went up and down the town And And A fella that serves in the fire service Was Sean Stopped me at the shop By the time I got around Three or four people Had stopped me mm-hmm. And I was like You know what After a while I went away And I It, did, it annoyed me And there's no point telling it. Even to this day It annoys me Because if your integrity Is attacked It's mm-hmm. attacked That's just the, the You know and in this part of the country, it's all really you have. So I was like, right. I always thought people would be happy for me to do well, you know, in this town. I was like, you know, people would be happy to see somebody that, that starts with nothing and tries to go and get something. But they're not. They're genuinely not. They're just the jealous people. I mean, we, we, we've we met this and, and people want to take a pop. But at me and Sean, that's all right. That's okay. We don't care anymore. And the beauty of it is, see, when you get to that point, wild free in, because you don't really care. Yeah. And if somebody says something, you see when we we had that and it was more Sean that was saying it to me and he's like, What's wrong with them? See when you, you think to yourself yeah. when somebody says something really bad and you're like, What the fuck is wrong with them? Not not what's wrong with me. Mm-hmm. It gets a very you nearly feel sorry for them. I see I yeah. see people writing that shit. I genuinely actually feel sorry for them because I'm like, Your life's fucked, eh? You're in a bad yeah. out spot. You're in a you, that guy, that that guy, the one to take a shot at our artist. He'll never be successful. He'll be too busy looking around trying to bring people down to level yeah. him out. He'll never want to climb up, and yeah. that's why I always feel sorry for people like that because they'll he'll they'll never he will amount to nothing, no matter with all the talent in the world. Because if your first instinct is to pull people down, then pull them up, you'll go nowhere. But it's not even it's it's the, the other side of that as well. You know what I do when I go out, and I try and. Spread a bit of happiness, a bit of joy, bring a bit of life. You know, when one of the first messages I got was from a man, whenever all this happened, wanted to go out and buy me me equipment. And I goes, no, I don't need that. All good, all's good. He says, well, he says, I know I have a message to John. He says, but in 2018, he says I was going through an unbelievable bad time. He says, and you might remember it. He says. You stood singing at the entrance of Victoria Square. He says, and I sat in the wall across from you. And he says, from the hour that you started to the hour that you finished, he says, I never moved. Not even to go to the toilet. Of the message on the phone, he says, you saved me that day. And I says, I just do what I do. I go out to spread joy and positivity. And that's exactly what you do as well. Somebody winning, make a few some, <laughs> somebody winning that ticket. Like how nice is it to turn around and say, the only you've won I, a house, you've... The only thing I would say is, John, I don't want to come across like I'm trying to be that holier now because that was a byproduct for me, I have to be honest. When I first set it up, it was business first for me. And yeah. that's just being honest. But I did get addicted to contacting, like to the point I wouldn't let anyone else ring the no way. Like That was my job. And, and no matter how big or small the prize got... I rang them because I had a, some buzz from that. No way. And when the pressure was coming on, so you ring in these people, but sometimes it would wind you up, you know. They wouldn't. I answer. because there was people you you would have said this to me. There's people that would have won, we'll say a thousand pound, and they were elated, like buzzing. You don't know how much this means to me and mm-hmm. everything else. And then there's one person in particular, one massive amount. Of, it, it it might have been I don't know what it was. Hundred big hundred grand. Hundred grand. Oh good. Month. No bar. All right. Thanks. All right. Um, do, do you want to come over or I'll come and see you or what? The, all right, come on down. That was it. Man. Like there was no wasn't excitement. Come for a photo, wasn't, wasn't Nothing. The, you didn't know, want to be, pu- yeah. And, and see when I hung up, I always distinctly remember this. Not that you're thinking me, like it's nothing to do with me. I didn't fucking pick you, you, you know, your mm-hmm. luck was in. That'll do, your luck. It wasn't a good luck. It was like, that'll do. And hung up the phone. I was like, I, I, I record mm-hmm. them, you know, because mm-hmm. I hope that they're going to be, yeah. the be- one of the best ones ever, I'll just say this is, this girl won a Dyson V12 Hoover. 
And she goes, oh, fuck, I can't wait to tell my ma. And she goes up and down. She goes, she's got one of my stupid cheap ones out of Lidl. <laughs> I just remember her excitement. She fucking drove down to lift her hoover that day. We were going to get posted and tell her to send a picture. Oh, I want to come and see what she has. Like, fucking drove down from Derry to lift her. But I'll always, like, I, I laughed. She was, she, was, she was that sort of character. She was funny anyway. You just knew that from her. She was, like, full of, like, but she come down with the child and all, and she goes, my man's got one of my cheap fucking... D- d- come out on a Thursday, Thursday needle job. I got a fucking Dyson. <laughs> but I mean, I was like, that, there was great joy in that, and I, and I told stories of my favourite ones and all. My favourite ones were never the big ones, but what happened is, you know, you do some of the big ones. You, you do get complacent, no matter what people say, and like, I, you know, it's not a long time since I was doing the door and getting punched in the mouth for a couple of pounds of minimum wage a night. It doesn't, to get lost in you but it did a wee bit when you were doing the big prices you were phoning people with 100 grand or you are phoning quarter of a million pounds mm-hmm. you almost overlook what 3 grand means to somebody mm-hmm. yeah. what a 1000 pound means to somebody you want a 500 pound you don't know some people, the situation they're in that some people are last. struggling for 100 quid at the moment mm-hmm. you that, know that, and then you look at this and you think that 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 to me was a wake up to I did I did get complacent. There's no point telling lies. I mean, we talking I, about I, it. I, and I said, Sean, you know what? Who the fuck do I think? Like, I become that I, like, you know, this is, these are big wins and I need to be treating these people with the same amount of excitement and respect as, mm-hmm. as they parted with the same money and it could mean more to them. See the guy that won 100 grand, the buying 20 pound ticket might mean fuck all to him. But see the person that won a thousand yeah. pound with a fiver ticket, the fiver could have been the fucking, you know, a fiver needed that week. Yeah, for, mm-hmm. the, so for like, the loaf of bread and the pint of milk. Yeah. So, and, Proportionate to them, they're part of more with me. Mm-hmm. And like we were talking about this the, the other day about about what what things mean and 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 I was just saying to him, you know, it was a, it was a restock and I was retaking of it, you know. But that to me, that that was that part of it, and you, you lose it because it was just busy. But now you look back and you're like, you know, and we're doing new things and we've new things coming up, and I was like, I want to enjoy it and I want to do, I want to do it, but I, I, that's, I just didn't want to say like. When you're an entertainer, your motivation's to entertain. I at the start, my motivation wasn't that, and there's no. And are you enjoying time. that aspect of it now? Like it's the it's the main fucking. You get yeah. addicted to that, you know. Did you go? In. Did you go to? We obviously done Balmoral this year again, did you? We were down doing. Mm-hmm. We done mm-hmm. live and and reporting. Oh, your crack. man loves it now. See every Bob time Morris we could. go out somewhere, it's like, oh bear, bear, can I get your photo? <laughs> And, do you, and do then you I'd be saying, hey, what's it like being famous? <laughs> well, hey, what do you hear? We got stopped for the handsome No, you never. We did. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and now I say to him, well, hey, John, I really enjoyed it. And, Thanks so much. Uh, thank you for coming up. And uh, I wish and, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. 100%. And Sean as well. Thanks a million. Big venture now. Aye, well, just keep the head down, ass up. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the motto on his only fun page. <laughs> Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Well, look, thanks very Thank much. Thank you, Joe. Thanks a million. Cheers, guys. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>